If anyone tells you it's impossible to win a betting, they are wrong. However, winning punters face a different type of challenge. In this video, we're going to cover three important areas of what you're going to have to consider. First is the profiling of customers. Secondly, the staking factor. And lastly, we're going to give you a solution how you can get more out of the game. Let's crack on. So the first thing we want to discuss is actually the profiling of customers. Now, what the risk manager is going to do is going to go through about 20 different points. And this is going to happen after you probably place five or 10 bets. But let's say 10 bets for the argument's sake. So the first thing they're going to look at is, is the account in profit? Or are you losing? Secondly, they're going to look to see if you're an advantage player. If you're just betting on certain things, you know, that have got an arbitrage opportunity or you have advantageous odds. Using tipsters could alert them because everybody that uses tipsters tends to bet at the same time. The tip comes out at say 11 o'clock in the morning and by 11.05 everybody's placing their bets. So they see a lot of bets going on the same thing at the same time. Now the problem with that is, you know, it's a risk management thing, a liability. So that's something else that they consider. Also, your betting activity. If you're just purely placing single bets, you know, they're going to be suspicious that you, you are a professional gambler or at least you've got a lot more knowledge. Next is targeting. By targeting, we mean, let's say you're, the only thing that you're interested in betting is the English second league. Then they're going to start thinking to themselves, maybe you know somebody in the kids' room, maybe you've got some kind of, you know, advantage knowledge that you get in fed to you. But more importantly, they're going to see that you're a bit of a specialist on that. Then demographics comes into play. The thing with demographics is if you're from say the UK or the US and you're betting Romanian third league football, they're gonna be asking, well, why is this person interested in third league Romanian football? So, you know, that can arouse their suspicions as well. And that brings me on to East Europeans. They have it particularly difficult. And the reason for that is quite simple. A lot of the matches over there are fixed. So, you know, if you're places like Hungary, Romania, you might have a problem. Also, you know, Turkey, these type of leagues, even Greece, the Mediterranean countries, they have a lot of match fixing. So they're a little bit skeptical about these type of customers. So they're watching their bets as well, extra sharp. And then they also look at people who are just placing in-play bets and that they're doing what we call latency cheating. That means, you know, if you've got somebody like in a tennis stadium who's a courtsider, they're feeding you the information before the bookmakers get it because they're like, you know, the, the pictures are maybe 10 seconds ahead. So what they do with latency cheats, they tend to put a timer on you, you know, to make the, the acceptance of the bet slower. So if anything happened, they can cancel it. And then the betting of niche markets. Now, a niche market might be uh, correct score betting, like 1-0 uh, or something like this. You know, you might find that a lot of games in one league are, are finished in this way. And you're just targeting betting this niche. You know, you have a little bit more knowledge about it than they do. So you can look at other ways of getting around that by, you know, betting like under 1.5 goals or something similar. It's, it's, you know, you've just got to think a little bit out of the, out of the ground, so to say. Yeah. And then odd sensitive. And by odd sensitive, if you click the link to join from an odd sensitive site, such as Odds Portal, Odds Checker, or you know, one of the software sites that are giving you value bets, then that's gonna automatically tell the bookmaker, you're looking at the odds before you're betting. So you're looking for the best odds. And of course, they're gonna be a bit skeptical about your ability to play if you are doing that, because that will insinuate you've got knowledge. If you're placing bets early, and that could be like the day before, it depends on the league, right? You know, you might have team information. Uh, you might just, they, they, you know, punt, actually what they like to see is that you're betting as near to the start as possible because that's when the odds are, are at the most correct within their opinion. So if you're betting, like I say, the day before, you could have issues with that. And then they're gonna look at the odds that you actually took and the odds at the start of the game. So it's called odds advantage achieved. You know, so if you took odds of two, and by the start of the game, it was also two, 
you haven't achieved nothing. But if by the start of the game it's 1.85 and you're doing this on a regular basis, then it proves that you know, you're more knowledgeable than the market, your timing, you're doing what we call iceberg and there's something similar. The staking variations. Now, a lot of uh, people think, uh, you know, you can put like uh, a quid on this, quid on that, a couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars there, and then it's one with 500. That's gonna make them suspicious because they think you're basically trying to sell them a dummy. Bear that in mind. Did you know that uh, only 7% of betting accounts are actually run by female? And probably half of those are the male counterparts asking the female to open the account. So you can see females don't bet so often. And if they do see a female account, they're probably gonna look at it a little bit more. I mean, while it's, uh, you know, um, sex bias, what can you say? Using e-wallets. Again, this will depend on what country you're in, but you know, in the big picture of it all, if you're using e-wallets, this is what GNOME accounts used to do. They used to open up a separate, uh, just an email address, because that's all the e-wallet is send the money there, place it onto the bookmaker's account, and then send it back to there and send it back to their own account. So that's how, you know, professional punters or these type of uh, um, advantage takers took advantage. So bear that in mind. If you are using uh, e-wallets, you could be limited quickly. Then there's a thing what you call a crossover. So what this means to them is, are you taking these little stupid offers that they put up? You know, are you gonna take the 10 spins on the casino, uh, or on the uh, one-armed bandits or whatever it's called? Uh, uh, are you gonna play the casino? Are you gonna buy into uh, what they're offering you, what they're promoting to you? So if you do that, you know, you can sort of convince them that you're probably an average player, that you are um, in it for the right reasons in their opinion and that can sort of uh, help you out but uh, if you're not doing any crossovers it's just single single betting again you're going to be limited pretty quickly the next question is do you allow cookies because you've always got that option allow cookies essential cookies or whatever you know so they can actually track and see your ip and but they can track a little bit more through it you know they use a software called snare a lot of these bookmakers and they can see you know what you was hitting before which uh, site you was on and it's, they, they say it's for fraud reasons but it's not it's actually to sort of try to find out uh, what you are have been up to you know whether you're, you're a professional gambler looking around uh, odds checking sites and things like this or getting information so just bear that in mind when you accept cookies you could do it on another ip um, so you you know you can do your research on one ip and uh, keep it separate so they can't really sort it or you could clear your cookies out of course before you accept so they can't uh, track anything but just bear that in mind anyway um and then uh the same bets happening at the same time. Now, we've already mentioned earlier about uh, tipsters. This is when people will come in with the same thing at the same time. But it's also, if people are buying in multiple betting accounts, you know, they're getting them from friends or they've got no min accounts, right? And they're gonna, because they're gonna get like 100 on with each account, they're gonna do it like 10 times, boom, 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 with, from 10 different accounts. Then they've got problems because they start to see it and it adds up. They'll close your account or at least limit it, right? Um, if it's possible for them, they're going to try to find out, you know, if they get really suspicious, they're going to try and find out what type of job you've got. I mean, you know, if you're betting uh, sums that are in proportion to that, like if you're probably a, a cleaning lady, they might uh, worry if you're betting uh, a thousand on each uh, bet. Whereas if you're maybe a stockbroker from the market, uh, they probably think it's normal. So uh, they might start, you know, fishing a little bit for your job. And a lot of the times they do that through social media. So they look at your social media accounts uh, they'll just tap in your name if, if anything pops up, see if you've got like a Twitter, see if you're following a load of bookmakers or you like offering yourself as a professional, offering tips, right? So just bear that in mind. You know, if you're going to look through these different things, probably don't do it under your own name, do it under something else, um, like a, a company, uh, like we have on, uh, for example, on Twitter, which is called Self Bet Analyst. And so, you know, that's something else that you need to take into consideration. So now let's talk about the factors we're going to discuss stake factoring this is the job of the risk manager they're going to make a decision on each and every account so the thing is to consider here the better you are the more difficult it's going to get as simple as that so let's crack on with this one the first thing is if they find out that you're using bots or you're just a pure arbitrage player 
your account could be sunk to 0.01. That means 1% stakes. So if you know you was playing like a relatively big game and there was a thousand limit on there, you would be able to bet 10. That's the way it is. The second part is if you're a hot gambler, you know, if you're super professional. I mean, we are talking about leisure bookmakers now. They're going to attach you with a 0.05. This means you can bet 5% of the limits. So if the limit on a horse race was, uh, say, uh, 500, you'd be allowed to bet 25 only. If you're successful, but not what they would call hot, so somewhere in the middle, they would use you as a marker and they would allow you about 0.1 or 10% of your stake. So in this instance with the horse racing, if it was 500 at a maximum on that bet, it would be then 50 they would allow you without problems. The e-wallet users, they could have issues and one of the bookmakers that we've done work with, they actually put them in at 0.2 which means 20%. It depends on which country the wallets are used from. Like if they're from Germany, where there's like a 5% betting tax, they're probably not going to be so concerned. But, you know, in other countries, the e-wallets, like we said earlier, gnomes tend to use them. You know, professional gamblers use them for shifting money around. And you're going to get limited to, like I said, 0 0.2. Following tipsters could have your limit to 0 0.3, Again, it depends on which tipsters, tipsters, which liability, might even be higher, might even be lower. But in general, you know, about 30% of your uh, allowance. So if it was at 500, you'd be allowed to bet in this instance 150 or 30% of the actual limit. 0 0.4 would be attached to people coming from price sensitive websites. And that's why I always try to tell you to stay away from, you know, clicking banners on like odds check and odds portals or maybe some of these value betting sites. You know, if you're going to join up with a bookmaker, sign up to a bookmaker, you don't need to click through a link, right? It's just an idea. Uh, go to the bookmaker yourself or go and look on some Dodo website and click through there if you, if you have to, because it could bring you problems and it could limit your account. Um, 0.5 or 50% stakes would go to people who are betting just singles all the time. So even if you're not profitable, but you're betting singles, they might want to restrict you because they might be suspicious that you can become profitable. New accounts, they always start with this like 1.0. So, you know, um, we're going to discuss that in the end phase. But the 1.0 is, you know, you're going to get 100% stakes probably for the first five or ten beds it just depends on the bookmaker you no know, two bookmakers are the same but it's got their own sort of opinion you know opinions of what's right and what's wrong but it's something to bear in mind you know this one percent to get started um, people who chase losses right bookmakers love them they pretend that they're trying to protect the public and this and this and this but it's not true they want people to chase losses and if you are chasing losses, you know, and you're a proven loser, they will raise your limit. So that 1,000 limit would then become 1,500 because you'd get a factor of 1.5. Then the VIP status, this is for people who are losing money and they're proven to lose money. Um, a lot of even professionals work on trying to get to the VIP status. So they're happy, actually happy to lose money first to get to that VIP status so then they can hit. But uh, a VIP status tends to start at around two. And then they have what you call an I-value account. Now, let me tell you what an I-value account is. Basically, somebody that's bringing them a lot of money each month in profits. Um, and obviously, it, it, you know, it depends on a number of factors. But uh, if they think it's like a safe, you know, this, uh, this money is coming in safely, it's not stolen, if it's not uh, uh, money laundering or anything like that, right, they're going to let you bet probably twice those limits. So, so you know, when that limit started to, to uh, when the bot users were getting like 10, these people are going to get 2,000 on that bet, you see? So it's a massive difference. Um, and then the next part is, and the final part is what we would call high net worth VIP. 
So you know, some business owners, they're billionaires, they like a bet, they're millionaires, football players, things like this, you know, people who are known to lose big money, right? They're gonna raise their limits, they let them literally bet anything on anything and everything because they know that they're gonna dig their own hole. So just keep that into, take that into consideration. So now we're gonna talk about what you can actually do about it, uh, the solution. Now, there's not such a thing as like the perfect solution and it's going to depend on you. You know, we as professional gamblers, right, with an opinion, we tend to bet in Asia. And so that's the first solution. You could take an Asian facing broker. And if you're betting a lot, a lot of money, right, they get paid commission on the turnover. It's very low. It's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2%, something like this, yeah. But you might even get a rebate on the actual commission on your turnover on top of what you are betting. But of course, that's for like the top level uh, punters, yeah? Also, you could get what they call a multiple bookmaker platform. And now there's companies like uh, Asian Odds offer this, uh, you know, it's like a Molybet uh, system, it's called Black. Um, so what happens on there, they have these best odds on the platform you don't see the actual bookmaker you've just got an account with them right and then they place the bet for you now sometimes the, the limits are relatively low it depends on which bookmaker is taking the bet because you know uh, these bookmakers don't always get like a hundred percent allowed right they probably already on like 20 percent or 30 percent so just bear that in mind but it is one way to get around the system for professional gamblers then of course betting exchanges if you are big on the exchanges maybe one thing you didn't know is even though you can get like two percent by just betting so many a month you probably even go and negotiate a better rate so if you are big on the exchanges and you know you're putting a lot through them you could actually go tapping on their door send them an email and ask them what they can offer you that's another thing then another way for sort of leisure well you know leisure facing um professionals by that i mean uh, people that are uh, you know want to bet with the sort of mass bookmakers the woolly mills the ladbrooks the corals and things like this yeah there's other ways to go around it you can use betting shops so if you've got somebody sitting on the other side of the phone they can identify the bets for you to place you can actually go maybe in the terminals or into a, a region where uh, the limits are quite high um, like the city of London, for example, actually in the city centre, you know, the, the, the banking area, right, you can get quite high limits. That's where we place a lot of horse racing bets, for example. But, uh, you know, it, it depends where you are. If you're going to go to, uh, if you're in a, a pretty poor area, uh, they might look at you funny if you place a big bet. But uh, you can get in there, you can play on the betting terminals, you can probably go to the uh, desk and you know you're going to look at you're not going to stand out from the crowd and it's a cash bet so they don't know who's behind it yeah so if you are dealing with the leisure bookmakers right the important thing is kyb know your bookmaker every bookmaker is different every bookmaker has different like uh, rules different mentality like paddy power the shittiest of the lot or should we say probably 888 or probably should say no you know what i mean they're all pretty crap uh, but uh, there's some that you can get more on than with others uh, bear that in mind um if you are um you know trying to build some kind of scope with the bookmaker you could slow boat it you could just open an account place one little bet today place one little bet in a week's time let it go for a couple of months you know do some multiples make it look like you're just the average clown let the uh, risk manager check you out tick you in as like a one and uh, then you can have a free run at it um so also i've put another one up as I play the game now play the game is if you actually go into this account and you start taking all the offers you know you go on to like the casinos you, you go on to uh, the card room or the slot machines uh, uh, you're betting on the lottery you're doing multiple bets you're just doing anything that's stupid you know like uh, uh, liverpool to win most salad to score first and uh, uh, over 2.5 goals or something like that you know and they they do this like special offer where it's like uh, instead of uh, seven to four you're getting two to one but in reality the real price is probably three to one and then they recognize you as being a muck punter and that could sort of buy you some kind of uh, well in their eyes it could give you um, open the doorway a little bit um, 
Then of course is the Blitzkrieg. Unfortunately, you have to do this with like a company like Paddy Power. You deposit, you just go all in on the day one because you know you're going to be banned by day two in any case. So there's no point in uh, playing the game with them. Uh, but if you, you know with some bookmakers, if the opportunity is there, just take it with a new account, bang it in, you've got it up and running. Uh, gnome accounts is another thing that's like third party accounts when you pay people to provide you like a documentation allow you to use their accounts um, it's become quite tricky because of the actual um, you know with the e-wallets the way it was and so nowadays it's bank accounts and they start wanting to see if you're getting regular payments from it blah 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 it depends in which country you're at but uh, like in the states it still works fine you know, you can pay people, you can do a revenue share, you can get them to open the accounts, uh, you can play on their machines by doing a team viewer or something like that. So that's another possibility. I don't want to wish to really say the next one, but I've gone to the end. That's migrate, which means basically get your bag, pack it, leave to another country that's more gaming friendly. You could fly to Malta, you could fly to New Zealand, you could fly to Georgia, if the Russians are not going to bomb it, that is. Um, you know, there's, there's certain places still in this world where you can actually bet and benefit. So even in the US at the moment, bonuses are massive, right? If you could go and register as living there, provide them that social security number, uh, allow them, uh, they would allow you to bet. They're going to give you a couple of thousand bonus. Take advantage of opportunities when they arise. So that's what we always did. We always move from one place to the other. We was quite happy with that for uh, quite a while. The best days have gone now. You know, the UK is uh, very stringent. To Ireland, they've always been pretty wobbly, but uh, yeah, you know, these are the things that your other opportunities. Um, if you are happy with top sports, if you can make money from uh, just purely top sports like uh, you know, top league football, NBA, NFL, stuff like that, yeah, then you know, the, the limits are much, much bigger, so they're gonna allow you to play even if you are professional, you know, you can still get on a few hundred, you probably get on a couple of thousand if you sort of spread it around. So just bear that in mind, that's another possibility. You can circumvent a certain amount by in play betting because they can't actually see if you are advantage taking. Um, in play betting gives you a little bit of, uh, uh, well, you know, it, it gives you a little bit of leverage in, in, in the respect that you can get on without being asked too many questions. You might get stopped if you start getting uh, too profitable, but uh, the limits get quite big. Um, you can hide it. They'll put it. They'll extend your timer first. So instead of it, the bet being processed in three seconds, they'll go to six or seven seconds, and so on. So you know that's another way. And uh, the last thing I would like to say on this one really is avoid making withdrawals. Now, if your account's going well and you haven't been limited, just don't take any money from it. If you do start taking money from it, you're gonna basically wake them up, they're gonna look through your beds, and then that's when you could get limited afterwards. So just keep taking, taking, taking until you get the blocker. And when you get the blocker, then of course you can take your money and run with it, so to say. So yeah, so that's about all I can tell you for now. Um, Again, you made it through to boot camp. Uh, we're putting an offer down at the bottom if you want to uh, take advantage of our um, friends' uh, uh, betting software for uh, value betting. You can get 50% off. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. We're also going to put this uh, blog on our website, this tutorial in a written format, so you can go in there, click over, and read it if you didn't understand something. So take care for now. We'll see you in the next one soon. Take care. Bye-bye.